are live today on the first episode of Spaces Uncovered. I'm your host, Alexa Bustamante, A&D rep at Herman Miller. And I'm very excited to have on the first episode today, the founder of Edit Studios, Janae Coldings. How's it going, Janae? It's a beautiful day, you know, can't complain. You just need to stay positive in this day-to-day -day world that we're in, right? That's all you can do. Well, thank you for joining us at the COI showroom today. Um, as you can see, we're being very COVID friendly. We got our hand sanitizer, we're spaced apart, film crews got masks on and following all the local guidelines. I'm very excited because today we will be uncovering one of Edit's latest projects called Blue Arc, a private equity company located in Vancouver, BC. But before we dive into uncovering the story of that space, Janae, tell me a little bit about yourself and the journey that got you to where you are today. Sure, sure. Well, I'll start way, way back. So I came from humble beginnings and grew up in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, where you could literally watch your dog run away for three days, like no lie. And from there, um, I, you know, when I was six, I remember watching Bob Vila's Home Again, which I'm dating myself here, but it was the only do-it-yourself uh, builder show on the air at that time, and I loved it. So I knew I was gonna be in design and construction from a really young age. Um, I ended up graduating from architecture at the University of um, Manitoba in Winnipeg and I could not get out of there fast enough after we graduated so a girlfriend and I took ourselves to Amsterdam with literally a paper copy of our resumes and no money and we went door to door and handed out resumes to architecture firms. We ended up getting great jobs there and that kind of began my career in interior architecture and it was really incredible. Um, but after a year we ran out of money and uh, <laughs> eventually came back to where I moved to Vancouver um, where let's say I started my big girl career and uh, I ended up working in um, design build industry in Vancouver for six years. Um, for any designer that's getting started in their career, I would absolutely recommend that. You learn so much from the trades when you're on site. Um, you find out really quickly that half of your designs don't work, uh, but the trades will, will help you and you've got to rely on them. So that was incredible. Um, Preceding that, I joined a, a firm called Dialogue where I uh, started their commercial interiors team in Vancouver uh, and grew it for about eight years. Um, we also opened a San Francisco office, which was really exciting. But I, uh, I had my son three years ago and it just became uh, clear that I had to make some priorities and some decisions. Um, so that's what brings me up to today where I started Edit Studios. Uh, we're now two years in and we focus on the idea of uh, brand creation, brand strategy and how that merges with interior design. And you know, I wouldn't do it differently. It, two years in and it's still exciting. <laughs> oh, I love that. No, that's a great story. So now if we can reflect to before this whole crazy pandemic, the commercial real estate industry, it was, it was thriving. There was lots of projects to choose from. What convinced you that Blue Arc was the right client for Edit to take on? Yeah, I mean, as much as I'd like to say we choose all of our clients, we don't. But um, in this case, it was it was a you know what we have a very simple criteria at it, which is we don't work with jerks. Um, so so that made it really clear off the get go. Aleem uh, and his team were lovely, and they were really coming to the table because they wanted transparency in design and construction. Uh, they wanted open and honesty, and from our side, we wanted to take their concept of this. Um, uh, provincial French country meets modern office. We wanted to take it to the next level and really push the boundaries. So he was game for it, we were game for it. So it was a really nice partnership. Um, but I think through this process, uh, what as a community, a design community, we sometimes just focus on the end, like what is the what does the end look like, versus we've really tried to focus on the whole process. And um, one of our mission statements at Edit was to be friends with e each of our clients at the end of the process. And I can genuinely say with this with this project, you know, we hosted garden parties during COVID to show our design process because there was no other way to do it. And so you got really close with the team that you were working on. And as a result, uh, you know, I can confidently say that we can host Aleem and his family over for dinner. And so I feel like if we can't say we're friends with our clients at the end of the process, we, we didn't do it right. So that's, you know, that's been an incredible experience. Yeah. No, that's definitely something to be proud of. And it's hard to build a relationship like that, especially during times like these. Yeah. Uh, when you first started the project, what did you discover were your clients' main business objectives? 
Mm, so I remember our first meeting with Aleem and being so astounded at how convicted he was in this idea of balance. So he was willing to obviously spend money on this amazing office space, but at the same time, he, he was very clear he did not want his staff staying late. He wanted them to go home to their families, even though he's creating a really amazing space for them. And equally, he, was, um, he had a, di a diverse uh, staff, and he was looking to hire a diverse staff. So a lot of working moms and dads, um, uh, hiring a lot of females in the, uh, the financial realm, and that's, that's quite rare to have as many any percentage uh, in, in that industry. And as a result, the design is actually catering towards a more feminine edge, which is kind of refreshing. Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting. And then another big thing was he wanted it to feel like a home uh, and cozy and comfortable and warm and welcoming. Um, he came to the table with this really strong idea of, as I mentioned before, French country provincial. Yeah. And we kind of, our team added a twist. We called it the 19th century Parisian flat. <laughs> and so it was kind of like merging new with old and how do we do that well. You know, that's such a unique concept. It's not often that you see that the old meets new and yeah, yeah I love it's that. Different. It's definitely different, yeah. And how did you execute the client's mission um, to, into a design intent for your project? Yeah, so um, I mean really we were trying to create the home and so when you walk in and you see the floor plan you immediately see, you're in the living room when you walk in so you come in you're in your living room right next to it you got this great community kitchen and then right next to that we have the heart of the home which I call the bar mm -hmm. and I would argue that this bar is the most elegant bar in a corporate office in Vancouver so I hope I get invited to some of the parties that they throw um, <laughs> And then my favorite part of the project was on the core of their office space, they had all the functional parts of the office. So server room, um, copy room, uh, print room, and we, we hid them behind hidden doors. And so it's kind of like the idea of when you go through like a 16th century castle and you find those hidden passageways, it's exactly like that. No. So, so that was pretty neat. Like we thought it was really different. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, materiality. So if you're designing a French country flat, you'd think of expensive materials like marble and wood and intricate millwork, but we didn't have that budget. So we had to get creative with using things like porcelains that looked like marble. Um, all of our paneling and our hidden doors were actually stock product from Home Depot uh, that our mill worker could get. So um, yeah, I think you know, it, was, it was difficult to, to try to meet that budget, but it all came together. Ooh, it sounds stunning. I can't. I would want those materials in my own home, to be honest. <laughs> so now that we've gotten to know a little bit about your client, their business objectives, and your design intent, could you share with us a behind-the-scenes anecdote of the project? Okay, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, so, I, if if I were to talk about. Uh, an antidote, not necessarily specifically project related, but more of a time period. You have to remember that this project, uh, this lease was signed four weeks before COVID hit. We didn't know it was coming. So our whole team started thinking everything was rosy, real estate was bumping along, and then four weeks later, everything changed and shut down. Um, you know, Blue Ark and the team was facing what I would consider was the most uncertain times of the 19th century. And what I was really inspired by and what I will take with me is how um, convicted Aleem was with continuing on to the vision. It, it was like he had this mentality, if we build it, they will come. And I really like that. He just, he stayed more focused than we did. And I think that allowed the project team to get really excited and want to finish it. And so the whole team really rallied. We partnered with Etrio Construction on the construction and you know, we were having to figure out procedures that procedures didn't exist. Like, how do you get a permit through the Van city of Vancouver when they didn't have a process during COVID? Um, we got to know our site guys really well because we were FaceTiming with them every two seconds because you couldn't go to site. Um, so it, it, it was an amazing way of seeing how people come together and redefine procedures. And I hope that it can inspire other owners and landlords to do the same. No, oh, I love that. And you know what? It's, it's not often that you get to build such a deep relationship with your client, one that you'd feel so comfortable to have them over for dinner. I think that definitely says a lot, a lot about the way that you do business. And, and just I love that it's part of your company mission as well. Yeah.
To be honest, this project has been a, an incredible example of how to successfully drive cultural change within an organization, whether that be through the way that you do business with your client or the way that your client encourages behavior within their team. So just ending off here, uh, what advice would you leave behind to the listeners on the episode today um, about someone who's at the start of their project journey? Well, I should be giving myself this advice more, but I would say listen, listen, listen. So in the beginning stages, you really have to go deep with your client on understanding the why. You know, why are they doing it? What are their business objectives? Who are their competitors? What are their fears? What are they trying to achieve? And if you can't answer those questions, then we shouldn't even be starting to design. And I have to actively tell myself to shut up in those first few meetings because it's not about me, it's about the client. And so I would encourage designers to just, you know, listen. Um, and I find that once we get those answers to the business questions, then it gives our design way more meaning versus it being a bunch of pretty pictures that we were inspired about because, you know, it's not about us. And at the end of the day, our clients' businesses need to flourish as a result of these decisions. Yeah. Right. So listen. <laughs> so, Janae, it's been absolutely incredible having you on the first episode of Spaces Uncovered. And now you know the role. So it's in your hands uh, to give back to the industry and refer the next design professional that's, that's going to be featured on episode I two. I wield so much power. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm excited to choose. I'm just not sure yet, but I'm going to get back to you. Of course. Yeah, I know. I, I wish I could choose, but it's, it's not in my control. It's, it's a referral program and yeah, it's not up to me, but this will be revealed on the next episode when it launches in winter. So again, thank you so much, Janae, for joining us. Uh, it's, I'm super excited and I'm sure all of us are to continue following your project story and just seeing how, seeing how your life unfolds through design. Sounds great. Thank Thanks. you.